Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel for another video on Gran Turismo 7. I'm back with a new time trial guide to help you earn 2 million credits in one lap on Gran Turismo 7. Now these events go live every single week, a new one, and you have 14 days to complete each and every time trial event. Now if you are interested in these videos and they help you out, do subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments if it's helped you out and give it a thumbs up. We do these every single time a new 2 million credit is launched. So um, I normally try and make sure I get into the top 10. I have managed to do it on this lap briefly where while it's still there, it won't be top 10 by the end, obviously, because I won't be going back onto this. I've just done a lap good enough for the gold. And so, yeah, how you do this, you go into the sport mode, then you're going to go into the online time trial. And this is where you receive your 2 million credits. You can see there you get your 2 million credits. That was for the Super Formula Autopolis. And then we're going to click on the lap time trial and challenge for the Le Mans event in group one. We already have the Willow Springs guide. So if you're looking for that, that is already on the channel. Go and check that one out. And hopefully that will help you get 2 million credits next week. This one you can see there, this was before I did my lap. I'm currently in the top 10. I think I'm P5 with a 23.2. So if you want to chase my ghost, you can load my ghost up within the event. It'll be there, the key 25. You'll see it on the leaderboard. And yeah, I think the time trial has increased since I've done this. So the gold and silver and bronze will be slightly different to what you saw there. Now, they're the times that you will need by the end of the event because it will adjust. Remember, it will change towards the end. Now, one thing to remember, at the start of your lap, you saw me circle the braking inputs there. That's because I was riding the brake to keep the boost charged. Now, you'll see why I did that towards the end of this lap. So... Going into turn one, we're going to be looking for the board on the right hand side and also when you straighten up your car. So you see there the total board on the right. And I also use the reference of just when the car's in a straight line. So as soon as that car's in a straight line, I'm onto the brakes before that total board. And now we're going to go through the gears down to into second gear. Now you can take a lot of curb off these corners. You can actually get your right hand tire. As long as your right hand tire is basically on the curb. So you look at this left hand tire all the way over the gray part. And right hand on this right hand corner, again, the right hand tire over the yellow sausage curbs and your left hand tire, as long as it's on the curb, basically, you should be good for no penalty. Now, up to fourth gear for the exit there, short shift, go straight into fourth gear, let that hybrid take control. And now at this point, you want to make sure your inputs are very smooth because you want to keep the hybrid um, working. If you put too much steering angle in, you're going to stop the hybrid. Now here, the end of the bollards on the right there, just past that, as soon as the car's in a straight line, I'm going to use that as a reference. So again, it's car in a straight line, onto the brakes, down to fourth gear, get this car rotating into this left-hand corner. Now onto the throttle as early as you can to get that hybrid back into action. Again, right-hand side, be careful of the bollards on the right. You've got to get as close to them as possible, but do not hit them. And again, steering inputs, narrow angles means the hybrid stays kicking in. Now this corner is flat out, however I give it a little bit of a safety lift, you can do this completely flat, I did it a couple of times completely flat with no issue, so you can do it, as you can come through here you can see I backed out of it on this go because I didn't really get the angle into the corner right, so I gave it a little bit of a lift there and that just means I'm not going to get a penalty on the exit, but you can do that flat out if you really want to be brave. Now make sure your right hand tire is back on the track before the end of the curb there. If you don't do that, you're very likely to pick up a penalty on this combination. Now we're going to stay in sixth gear all the way down the straight with fast forward in it. Do not go into seventh gear with this car, stay in sixth. And we're going to look for the hundred board there. You've got one on the right, one on the left. We're using the one on the left because it's easier for where, which angle we're coming in. We're breaking pretty much dead level with that hundred board. And we're going to go down through the gears, down into third gear. As we approach this corner, you can see we're going to take a lot of curb off again at Le Mans. So again, down to third gear and look how much we're taking off. Right hand tire onto the grey bit of the right hand side of the curb and left hand tire just touching the curb still. And then as you come through here, just as you're going over the curb, dab a brake again, down to second gear for rotation, then back up to fourth gear instantly and try and get this point here to straight line as much as possible because you want to keep your eye on that hybrid. You want it to stay red as long so it's using the hybrid and that's because you want to keep as minimal input as possible through that part there. If you put too much steering input in, it will go green which means it's regenerating. You want to keep it red to mean it's using that hybrid. Again, staying in sixth gear for the end of the straight and using the 100 boards again for our reference for the next braking zone. We're braking dead on them 100 boards. You can see inputs going in pretty much right on that 100 board. And again, you can take a lot of curb off onto this chicane. So again, left hand tire onto the gray part towards the left hand side of the curb and right hand tire, try and keep it within the curb, just touching the curb still. And then again, dab a brake just as you come off of the curb 
and you, that's for a bit of rotation. And again, right hand tight onto the grey bit again on the right hand side of the curb. And then again at this point, keep your eye on the hybrid regeneration. You can see how it's red and it briefly went green. That was because my steering inputs were not perfect there. And I lose a bit. You can see how the ghost has pulled away a bit. So bear that in mind for your exits of corners. It's really important. Now into this next braking zone, you can see you've got the yellow bit of barrier on the left. And I actually use the kink in the corner where it straightens up. That's what I use as my reference. I brake just before that onto the brakes and you're going to get the car to go from the left hand side of the track and widen the line in so down to first gear then back up to third gear for the exit miss second gear out up to third gear and accelerate using that hybrid again all the way on this straight and remember sixth gear you're not going to go into seventh gear so again flat out no change of gear into seventh and this corner again completely flat out it's just about getting the right hand tire into this curb on the right side now as you straighten the car up you're going to get onto the brakes so you can see we're just about to straighten the car up and we're on the brakes nice and early and we're going to go down into third gear now i made a bit of a mistake here on this turning in point i turned in a little bit late you really want to get it touching the curb on the left hand side and that's cost me a bit on the exit you can see the well as i go into fourth gear losing a bit of exit speed however into this next braking zone we're using the 50 board or the board on the right hand side of the reference braking a long time before then make sure you're braking away before them boards because if you're braking too close to them you're going to understeer wide down to first gear let the car rotate with the lower gears and then double shift back up to third gear or fourth gear it's up to you depends how good how good you get the exit i didn't get it perfect there but now you're going to see the benefit of why i braked at the start of the lap look at his hybrid he's run out of hybrid because he probably didn't regenerate it at the start i've managed to keep more of that hybrid and look at the advantage that gives you about two three times instantly gain just because i braked at the start of the lap to keep the hybrid so use that and you will gain a little bit of time now into this really fast right hand corner you basically just need to give this a little lift off the throttle so watch this as we go into the corner a little lift off the throttle and then back onto that throttle maximum this car has so much downforce even on the hard tires it can just carry the speed through the corner there without much problem i probably could have done that completely flat but we just give it a little safety lift just to make sure again completely flat all the way through here and then you're going to go into your next braking point which is just as we approach this corner here it's more about line of sight for this don't there isn't really a reference i use i just do it by distance just a gradual tiny bit of braking input just to get the weight onto the front of the car and then down to fifth gear again you're going to chuck it into this left hand part again i could have done this a little bit quicker i think overall this lap could be over a second quicker easily and you can see onto the throttle nice and early here you give a little lift off the throttle and then back onto the roll so off the throttle back on the throttle just to give that car the ability to not understeer and get a penalty on the exit and then it's completely flat out here into the next braking zone which we're going to use the pit lane entrance as our reference so as we come here you're going to see here there's a little triangle there use that as your reference braking just before that onto the brakes and we're going to go down to fourth gear for this first part and again you're going to take a lot of curb off so look at the left hand tire as we go over the curb, left hand tire over the yellow little sausage curbs. And again, you're gonna line this up so that the right hand tire is then gonna attack the next part. So again, right hand tire onto the curb, down to third gear. And then as soon as the car straightened up again, you've got the car in that straight line onto the brakes. And we're gonna go down to second gear for a bit of rotation. And then we're gonna go back up to third or fourth gear, depending on how well you do this for the exit. So I actually think I had to do this in third because I didn't quite hook this up. So again, had to do it in third gear would have liked to have been in fourth gear there for one smooth exit but we go over the line for a one, three minute 23.2 which is a reasonable lap there's definitely well over a second to come off that in the porsche i think probably two, a second and a half to come off that in the porsche easily now the good thing about this track is it's a very long track and it's got a lot of straights so getting the two million credits shouldn't be too difficult if you get a reasonable lap in Again, look at the track limits through here. Look how much we take off. It's not the white lines. You need to use the curbs as your reference for the outside tire. That is what you base your limits off on this track. It is not the white line. You can use so much of that curb and get away with it. And again, through this corner, you can actually take more than what I do off on this fast, fast right hand corner. You can see, I could have been more aggressive there and completely took that flat out. That little lift isn't needed, but if you just want to get the gold, I do recommend you just give it a little lift just for safety through there. Again, into this corner, again, it's the curbs, not the white line. Curbs, not the white line there, because otherwise we'd be getting penalties. And again, that straight line in the car there is really important for the hybrid to give you the pace down this straight. You can lose two temps purely by hybrid on these straights. So always try and be smooth with your inputs and your angles that you're putting in on the exits. This is where you can see I come from a slightly awkward angle there. Too much input there, lost a bit of the hybrid on acceleration and probably lost about a tenth just because of that one little mistake. It's really important to keep that hybrid going out of these exits. Again, 
Nice move exit off here. We actually use third gear there. I can't work out if third or fourth is better. Sometimes fourth felt better, but I was using third and it seems more consistent with the exit of that corner. Now flat out and sick. And then as soon as the car straightened up, you see that down to third gear. Again, miss the apex there. You can see how that little gap between the curb and my tire. You really want to get that tire up onto that curb so you can get into fourth gear for the exit speed. And again here, this is where people that haven't regenerated regenerated the hybrid at the start tend to lose out a bit there because they haven't got the hybrid left at the end so remember to do that at the start of your lap where you just ride the brake a bit keep that hybrid fully charged and it will help you out at the end of the lap just remember that one so again into this right hand corner a little bit of lift off the throttle there back onto the throttle use some of the curb on the right i was very cautious there you can see there was a lot of time to play up there so loads of time available on this lap i'm pretty sure this time will be get it destroyed by people who push this time trial but i'm pretty confident this lap will remain gold now if you are interested in a different car the master 787 is also usable for this and it's probably a little bit quicker however i will say this it'll probably be less enjoyable and probably a little bit harder to drive than this porsche the Porsche will be a little bit more simple, takes the speed through the corners a lot more easily. And yeah, you'll probably have an easier time with the Porsche, but the 787 might be quicker overall. But I do think this Porsche has quite a lot of time left in it. So yeah, remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I do these every single week and I'll be back with more next week and more videos and live streams as well. Thanks again for watching, everyone.